Let's be honest, we all care about money and it's a big reason for why someone would choose to pursue engineering. But usually people don't like to talk about money and they choose to keep their salaries a secret. So I'm going to be as transparent as possible and share exactly how much I made during my engineering internships. I'll also share how much high paying companies pay their interns just as motivation for something that you can work towards if that's what you're interested in. My first internship was between May to August 2017 and in that 4 month time period I worked for 3 small startups making a total of $3,000 for those 4 months. It was pretty low but I learned a lot. The first 2 startups I worked for had less than 10 people in the company and the third startup I worked for had between 15 to 20 people at that company. If you're curious, the first startup was called Brilli, the second one was called Helper, and the third one was called Access Labs, but they recently changed their name to Rise. Now, although I made $3,000 in those four months, not all that money went straight into my pocket. To know exactly how much I made during this internship, it's important to talk about the expenses I needed to pay for. During this internship, I lived in a city in Canada called Mississauga, and the office I worked in was in downtown Toronto, which was about an hour commute each way. At the time, the train cost $12 a day. I took this train 5 days a week for 15 weeks, which means over the 4 month time period, I spent about $900 on train and transportation expenses. In addition to that, I obviously had to eat lunch when I was at work, and lunch usually cost between $10 to $15 per meal. Let's take the average to be $12.50 for each lunch meal I eat at work. So $12.50 multiplied by 5 days a week, multiplied by 15 weeks of the internship, we get a total of $900. $137.50 spent on lunch for this four month internship. So, although I got paid $3,000 for this four month internship, I had a total of $1,837.50 of expenses, meaning I was really only able to save $1,162.50. But I know what you're thinking what about rent or the food that you had to eat for dinner or on the weekends? Why don't you include that in your expenses? Well, at the time, I was 18 years old and I lived at home with my parents, so luckily they didn't have to pay rent or anything like that. My second internship was at a company called Ecobee. They make a bunch of smart thermostats and other smart home products. This was my first real paid engineering internship. I worked there from January to April 2018 and they paid me 24 Canadian dollars an hour. I worked 40 hours a week for a total of 16 weeks, meaning that for that 4 month time period, I made $15,360. But let's not forget taxes, before any of that money enters my bank account, the government needs a piece of it. I believe I was taxed about 20%, so that means I only got to keep 80% of that money, which means over that 4 month time period, doing the math, I only got to keep $12,288. That's about 4 times more than how much I made in my first internship. Now let's look at how much it costs to make that money. The office was located in downtown Toronto and again, I lived at home in Mississauga with my parents so I didn't have to pay rent and I only had to focus on my transportation and food expenses. For transportation, I would pay again $12 a day to take the train from Mississauga to downtown Toronto. I would take this train every single day, 5 days a week for 16 weeks which means over the 4 months it cost me $960. This term I wanted to save a little money so I ate out less and started to cook my own lunches and that would cost me about $150 a month just for groceries and over the 4 month time period that added up to about $600. I also started training Jiu Jitsu that term and going to the gym. The Jiu Jitsu membership cost me about $113 per month and the gym membership cost me about $30 per month. So my health and fitness expenses summed up for the 4 months totaled $572. Also on the weekends I'd usually go out with some friends which usually costs around $20 a weekend or about $320 for the 4 months. Subtracting that from the total pay I got after taxes, I end up only keeping $9,836. Honestly, that's pretty good. I managed to save about $10,000 that term. My third internship was at a company called Valadier. They were a startup in the oil and gas industry and I worked there from May to August 2019. They paid me a total of $26 an hour. Similar to my last internship, I was taxed about 22%. So although technically they paid me $26 an hour, $5.79 of that $26 an hour went to the government. Looking closer at this $5.79 that was taken out of my paycheck, about $2.60 went into federal tax, $1.40 went into provincial tax, $1.39 went into CPP contributions, and $0.41 cents went into EI premiums. This meant that after tax, I actually only made $20.21 an hour. 
This internship was 16 weeks long and I worked 40 hours a week. So doing the math, that means over this four month time period, I made $12,934.40. Next, let's move on to expenses, which were pretty similar to my previous internship. The startup's office was in downtown Toronto, and again, I lived at home in Mississauga, and the commute was about one hour. As you can tell, I really enjoyed working in downtown Toronto. Anyways, I took the train again to and from the office, which cost me about $12 a day, or $960 for the four months. In addition to that, I spent about $600 for groceries for this four month term. I also continued training Jiu Jitsu that term and going to the gym. I was training Jiu Jitsu at a new gym called Toronto BJJ and they charge around $150 per month. The regular gym membership was about $30 a month. So my health and fitness expenses for the four months cost $720. Also I'd go out with my friends during this internship on the weekends and each weekend would cost about $20. So for the four months I spent about $320 on chilling. Subtracting that from the total pay I got, I end up keeping $10,334.40. Honestly, that's pretty good. I managed to once again save around $10,000 that term. If you're wondering how I keep track of all these numbers, expenses, etc., at the end of every month, I'll look through my receipts and bank statements to see how much money came in and out. Being able to work with money and truly understand it is something that I had to learn on my own since school doesn't teach it. There are so many websites out there to help with this, one of them being Skillshare who are sponsoring this part of the video. They're an online learning community that has a ton of courses about a bunch of different topics like personal finance, productivity, and time management. They're all pretty interesting and inspiring classes, especially if you want to learn things related to personal growth. Personally, for me, one of my favorite classes was Stock Market Fundamentals by Zach Hartley. To make good use of your money, you need to understand how the stock market works. But when I first learned about it, I was overwhelmed. But this class was able to explain it in a nice and organized way. And I also got the chance to watch it for free. And you can too. And that's because the first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, just like I did when I was first starting out. Moving on, my next internship was at a startup called Blended. They worked on building robots that can make healthy smoothies the same way a vending machine would. That startup was located in Sunnyvale, California, and it was honestly really out of my comfort zone because I had to move all the way from my home in Toronto in Canada all the way to the Bay Area for this new job for only four months. They paid me around 20 US dollars an hour, which roughly equated to 26 Canadian dollars an hour at the time. That pay is actually really low for companies companies in the Bay Area since most of them pay a lot higher. But I don't know, I thought it'd be worth it because I always wanted to work in sunny California. The experience I got from there actually really helped me land my next role at Tesla which I'll talk about a little later in the video. Now let's do the math to see how much money I was able to save after taxes and expenses. I was taxed about 20% so technically that means after taxes I only made $16 an hour. Although this internship was scheduled to be 16 weeks long, it actually ended early because of the COVID-19 pandemic. My first day was on January 6th. 2020 and then I was forced to go back to Canada on March 22nd 2020 when everything shut down. So my internship ended up being 11 weeks instead of 16 weeks. Working about 40 hours a week for those 11 weeks, I ended up making roughly $7,040 after taxes. Now, during this internship, obviously I had a lot more expenses since I wasn't living at home with my parents anymore. I had to pay rent, that was my first expense, and it cost me $1,050 per month. Luckily, the place was furnished, so I didn't have to worry about buying furniture for this place. Also, the 1050 monthly rent price that I mentioned earlier included Wi-Fi, utilities, and water bills, so I didn't have to pay anything extra for utilities. Oh, also. So although my internship ended early, I still had to pay rent for all four months because that's what we said in our contract. So even if I was living there, I still had to pay rent for those months. That means my rent expense was $4,200 for my four month term. Moving on, I also had a bunch of transportation expenses, but for some context, the place I was living at was in San Jose and my office was in Sunnyvale. I would bike from my house to the train station for 15 minutes, then take a 24 minute train ride bringing my bike on the train, then biking another 15 minutes from the train station to the gym where I'd work out for an hour. After my workout, I'd shower at the gym, then bike another 2 minutes to get to the office. Luckily, the gym and the office were right next to each other. I'd usually get to the office around 9am and leave at 5pm. 
I then bike 15 minutes, take a 24 minute train ride, and bike another 15 minutes to get home. Once I get home, I chill for a bit, then bike about 15 minutes to get to Jiu Jitsu, train for about an hour and a half, then bike another 15 minutes back home. That was my day to day, so analyzing my expenses for that, you'll see that first I had to pay $100 for my bike, but I was luckily able to sell it for $50 at the end of my internship, so I'll only count the difference as an expense, so my expense for the bike was $50. Then to take the train, I'd have to pay for a monthly pass, which is about $100 a month, or about $300 for my 11 week internship. My Jiu Jitsu cost $150 per month, or $450 for the three months that I was there. My gym cost $50 a month, or $150 for the three months. I also had to pay for groceries, Usually I'd pay around $200 a month for groceries, which added up to $600 for the three months. Luckily, the startup I worked for offered us free lunch, so I didn't have to worry about feeding myself for lunch. I only had to feed myself for breakfast and dinner and on the weekends, obviously. Moving on, because I was living in a new country and a new city, obviously I wanted to explore it, so I'd spend the weekends chilling with some friends, which obviously cost a bit of money. I'd go to places like Santa Cruz, Big Sur, LA, and a bunch of other touristy stuff that people usually do when they come to Cali. My LA trip alone cost about $200 even though we were only there for a weekend and all our other outings were about $30 a weekend so adding all that up for the 11 week internship roughly I paid about $500 for chilling purposes on the weekend. Oh and if you're wondering why I didn't include my flight expense from Toronto to San Francisco and back is because luckily the startup paid for that so I didn't have to include that as a personal expense. Subtracting that from how much money I made in the 11 weeks I was doing this internship for, I ended up only saving $790. Financially, that's absolutely horrible, but I like to think that it was a good experience because engineering in the Bay Area is definitely quite a bit different than engineering in Toronto. Finally, my last internship was at Tesla. Technically, it was a contract role, but it was relatively short term, so I'll just consider it an internship for this purpose. They paid me 42 US dollars an hour, which was obviously a huge jump from what I was making previously. I also had to work overtime some days, and for every hour you work overtime, you usually get paid 1.5 times as much. That being said, I'd usually work around 50 hours a week when I was at Tesla. 40 hours were paid at $42 an hour, and the last 10 were paid at $63 an hour. So that added up to $2,310 per week, or $36,960 for a four month term. But that was before taxes, so more accurately after taxes, $25,872 was how much was made in a four month time period. Just to have a fair comparison to the other internships, I'll do the math for the expenses for a four month time period. I had to buy a car, which cost me about $6,500. Gas would cost me about $40 a week or $640 for a four month time period. Rent cost me about $1,200 a month, which included utilities, water, Wi-Fi, etc., which means for a four month time period, that added up to $4,800. Groceries were about $350 per month or $1,400 for the four months. During this time, my jiu-jitsu and gym membership combined cost about $200 a month or $800 for the four months. Whether you think the pay I mentioned in this video is high or low, this isn't me trying to flex or show off anyway. I'm just showing how much money I made in my internships and how I dealt with money when I was a couple years younger. I hope that by being transparent, this brings you value and allows you to figure out how you can manage your own money when you're doing internships. You see how much you make per hour and you think that's pretty cool, but no one tells you how much you'll be taxed and how much you'll have to worry about expenses. But how much I was earning is actually nothing compared to how much you can really be earning working in big tech companies. Mechanical engineering interns at Apple make about $52 an hour. And if you work over 40 hours a week, which you probably will because, well, it's Apple, you'll be making overtime pay, which is about 1.5 times as much. So for every hour you work over the 40 hour limit, you end up getting paid $78 an hour. Also, engineering interns don't have to pay for rent because Apple gives them corporate housing and gives them a place to stay. But if you decide that you don't want to use their corporate housing, they'll give you an additional $1,000 per month that you can put towards rent. Facebook pays their mechanical engineering interns about $45 an hour, and they also give them corporate housing. They also reimburse all your daily food and travel expenses for up to $75 a day. Oh, and they give you $500 that you can spend on wellness, which means you can just put that money towards a gym membership. So if you think about it, they literally pay you and then cover all your main expenses. If you think that's crazy, software engineering interns at Citadel make $84 an hour, plus corporate housing, plus company provided transportation, and breakfast, lunch, and dinner all included. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I share with you how much my mechanical engineering degree cost me, or check out that video where I share with you what it's like working as an engineer at a tech startup. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.